Song of Solomon Chapter 2 I am the Rose of Sharon and the Lily of the Valley. It's that famous verse that often quoted, known by the world, I am. Well, God told Moses, I am that I am. Jesus said, I am. See, the fact is that the Israelites, the rulers, began to pick up stones to, to, to stone them. A rose. A rose today has a thorn. Wait till you see what a rose will look like when the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. Imagine the curse being removed. If a rose is valued today and highly priced, what will it be like in the millennium? A rose of Sharon. I've got a number there, but I don't have a note. And a lily of the valleys. Isaiah 53, 2. 1 Kings 20, 28. A valley, when we think of, when you go down to the valley, it, it's, a, it's a, a place that you don't want to go. It is troubles and problems. And yet, there is a beautiful lily. You know, a rose is valued. But a li lily is beautiful in times of trouble. Not money that will get you through in times of trouble. It's the beauty of God that he loves us. As the lily among thorns, it's protected. Here's a lily. If it's surrounded by thorns, you're going to cut yourself up to go get it, to pull it out. Christ-like. Upon his brow they place a, a, a crown of thorns upon our Savior. What a, what a beautiful thing the Lord Jesus Christ upon his head, circled his head with thorns. And there he is, the lily. So is my love among the daughters. Beauty. Even in a sin-cursed world. You know what we are? We are lilies to God. In a sin-cursed world. When he looks down, he sees his son. He sees us as lilies. Of a world of thorns. As the apple tree among the trees of the wood, forest, or a gathering of trees, so is my beloved among the suns. With this apple tree I sat down under his shadow with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. So here you are in a, in a forest kind of atmosphere and you're walking, here's an apple tree. <clears throat> you sit down under it, grab one of the apples or two, and you enjoy the fruit. Just sitting there, relaxing. See, it's, it's amazing that this book how the Lord speaks to us. And it says, My beloved among the sons, I sat down his shadow, his fruit, to us. He brought me to the banquet house. He's going to bring us to the banquet house one day. Oh, that feast of the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's going to invite all the Old Testament saints to come. Not as the bride, but as the guest. His banner, his flag, his protection over me was love. Man, you think about all the stuff we go, all they that live, live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Yet under that was his banner over us of love. Kind of hard to think about sometimes when the things we go through. But yet the love of God is there. Stay me with flagons, and that's a vessel for holding wine. 
It's metal or pottery. Keep me with the flagon. Comfort me with apples. We just saw the tree in, in verse 3. For I am sick of love. And it's not, I'm sick of it. Uh, that's overwhelmed, overjoyed. Eat too many apples, you get sick. But again, an apple a day will keep the doctor away, they say. I wouldn't think by verses 3, 4, and 5 that the fruit of Adam and Eve would be the apple. Scripture was scripture. I wouldn't say it would be the apple. His left hand is under my head. And his right hand does embrace me. So he's got his left hand under her head. And if you guys right on if you guys right hand around her, he is laying to her left. The right hand being the strength is the right hand that is holding her. And we saw that in, in the book of Ecclesiastes about the right hand and the left hand. In strength, in the strength of his right arm, his right hand, does he hold his bride? In love. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem. We saw that in verse chapter 1. By the rose. And that's a deer. So we call each other deer. Because the Bible says it. And by the hinds of the field. That ye, the daughters of Jerusalem, stir not up nor awake my love till he please. Oh, look at that. Concerning the daughters of Jerusalem, the groom of this woman is asleep. For the nation of Israel as a nation, as a corporation, as a group and not as a individual, Jesus Christ is asleep. Now for an individual Jew that wants to come to Christ for his soul, now he's alive and well and awake and ready to receive. Pictures 8 on rapture. And maybe even the time of the rapture. <coughs> I'm not going to date guess or anything because I'm I don't know. The voice of my beloved. Now I can give you a whole bunch of references on that. You know, dealing with Christians today, their beloved is not the beloved of the Bible. Some sports team some singer, some movie actress, someone who races around in a, in a sport, someone in a uniform, anything but the voice of the beloved. Behold, he cometh leaping upon the mountains, skipping on the, upon the hill, joy. My beloved is like a roe or a young heart. That's a male deer. Santa comes with deer. Mm -hmm. Some wait for Santa Claus to come. And he has a roe or heart. One has a red nose, so I'm told. Behold, he standeth behind our wall. The bride has returned to her home. Wall. 
Would you say a wall would be like a firmament? Read about in Genesis 1. He looketh forth at the windows and run that verse back to Genesis 7:11. With the flood, NASA calls it a space window. We can't launch no rockets until that space window is correct. Showing himself through the lattice, Acts 1 9, Matthew 24, and I don't have the verses there. Scrunched up a dozen of them. So somewhere in heaven, it's likened to a window. My beloved spank and said unto me the bride, what would he say to her? What would this voice? Martin Luther said that he had Jesus come into his room. He threw a bottle of ink, ink at him. What would be the voice that you would hear from Jesus Christ today? You show up in your toast? I don't think so. In the dead limb of a tree? I don't think so. He would say, rise up, my love. Who is his love? The church. My fair one, and come away. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 53, Revelation chapter 4. Enoch. Now we get into, for lo, the winter is past. Any winter that's past is great. Death in the winter. We're seeing a resurrection. The rain is over. That would be the latter rain of March, April. And gone. We're in the springtime of Palestine. Remember, everything's Palestine. It's not American. The flowers appear on the earth. Time of real life. The time of the singing of birds has come. The birds have come back from their hibernation of somewhere else. The singing of birds has come. The voice of the turtle, and that would be a turtle dove, is heard in our land. The rapture just might happen in the springtime of Palestine. I don't know when it's going to happen. The fig tree, that's a picture of Israel, Matthew 24, 32, Jeremiah 24, 2, and Isaiah. Put it forth her green figs. When Jesus came to the fig tree, there was only leaves. And the vines with the tender grape give a good smell. Revelation 14, 14 to 20. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Well, Thessalonians tells us those that have died in Christ will rise first, then those that are alive. Or maybe this is a mid-tribulation rapture. The church age rapture, maybe verse 10. I don't know. Oh, my dove. Well, he has dove eyes. He calls us dove. First, we have Christ as my dove. We're faulty. He's blameless and harmless. We are, the, the bride's place of safety is in the cleft of the rocks. To speak of the wounds of Christ. Oh, my dove, thou art the cleft of the rock, a nice safety spot to be in. And yet Israel, 
will be in Celepetria, the rock city at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, fleeing from the Antichrist. So your representation of a dove you think is just the Holy Spirit is a time of Israel that they are scared stiff and being killed and being eaten by the Antichrist. Let's have a Jew's blood and Jew's body in our mass. A mass of the entire world. A massacre. Exodus 33, 22. In the secret places of the stairs, let me see thy countenance. That's your face. You believe me, they're going to want to see their Messiah at that point. They're going to be fed like they were in the wilderness. outside. So they got to step out, out of protection to get their food. As they're being chased back into that, they say that this and to get into sell the peach or the pathway or the, the roadway, however you want to say it, it's only for one or two people can fit through. You know, when they walked through the wilderness in, in the time of Exodus and Numbers, it was a wide path, it's going to be even narrower than the Red Sea. Let me hear thy voice. Israel is going to be crying out to, to God. We want to hear from you. The 400 year silence <coughs> between Malachi and Matthew. It's going to happen again. For sweet is thy voice and thy countenance is comely. Well, guess what? It wasn't during the first advent. They put him on a cross. That verse 10, if that is our rapture. Verse 11, 12, 13 looks like that the land will be in the springtime, Palestine. Then, like I said, maybe the mid the mid tribulation rapture, the tribulation saints they have been running. Take us the foxes, the little foxes, which picture sin. Go tell that fox. Uh oh, that spoiled the vineyard, the vine. Excuse me. For our vines have tender grapes. Foxes will run up and down amongst the vines. And just by them doing that will kill the grapes. Samson took two foxes, tied them together, and put a firebrand. That's uh, Absalom. Absalom, a type of Antichrist. And burned down the field of, uh, of Joab. To get his attention. That he might come back into Jerusalem. Jesus said go tell that fox. Talking about a Roman governor. You're talking about young tender grapes. They're not even ready for new wine. My beloved is mine. I am his. He feedeth among the lilies, chapter 2, verse 1. Really? This is Solomon and his wife. This is the Lord Jesus Christ amongst his bride.
And the dove is us in verse 14. Thou art in the clefts of the rock in the secret places of the stairs. We're, we're told to go you know the world and preach the gospel. If it's the rapture, in the time of the season of the rapture, stairs going up, as Jacob saw the angels ascending and descending, let us see thy countenance, let me hear thy voice come up hither, For sweet is thy voice. The end of all hardship. The end of all trouble. You have two applications here. To the bride and to Israel. Who is God's bride. Take us to foxes and little foxes. That spoil the vines. Our sins. That have destroyed. And, and caused us to be fruitless. And caused us to lose reward. And our vines have tender grapes. We're still growing. We'll still be growing. Those that are alive. My beloved is mine. And Jesus Christ is mine. I am his. And he said that in the Gospel of John. Of my sheep. Which is Israel. Then he says, other sheep I have. He says, no one can pluck them out of my hand. That the Father has given me. Then we run into 16. My beloved is mine. I am his. He feeds among the lilies. Where we are. In a thorn cursed world, the lily of the valley, in our hardship, unto the daybreak. There's a second advent. And the shadows flee away. Wait, excuse me. Psalm 23 Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death. Turn, comma, my beloved, and be thou like a roll or a young heart upon the mountains of Bether. Hosea 6 1, Malachi 4 3, Psalm 19. What is that? Well, it has implications of the rapture. Of our time of trouble, who the Lord is to us, a lily and, and, and a rose. I'm on a rock, solid, hard ground. For Jesus is my rock. And then you got a bunch of animals running around on mountains, which I've never seen and watched. But to the writers of, of people in Israel, they would know. They, they know people like that. They know about the goats. I know one thing. The Lord Jesus Christ, who is my rock, is coming for me one day. And he's going to call me away. I'm going to be happy to see his face and hear his voice. His sweet voice. And all my sins will definitely, all of my sins at that point. All my sins, even though some are going to be burnt up. All my sins will be gone. Total. Absolute. Never more to sin again. 